All right, guys, we are getting into the last issue of Future State for this week. And holy crap, this has been a lot of videos, but I'm super happy that I was able to help you guys out, get this out to you. I'm really excited for all of Future State, so we're going to be covering every single issue as they come out every single week. We're just going to be pumping these out for you guys as much as possible. Now, like I had said in some of my other videos, I'm going to be starting up a podcast here soon. Our first episode is going to release either Thursday or Friday, and we're going to be covering and talking about all of Future State. We're going to be talking about the King in Black series going on with Marvel, and we're going to talk about upcoming Marvel cinematic stuff coming out on TV like WandaVision and so on and so forth. The name is going to be Comic Breakdown and More Podcast. Be sure to check it out. I'll leave links to it in the description once it goes live so you guys can check it out for yourselves. See if it's something you're interested in and listening to for a little bit. But enough of that. Without further ado, let's dive into this issue. So diving into this issue, we have Swamp Thing talking to someone he calls Kala. And she wants the story of what happened to the old world. And Swamp Thing really, really just tells her, you know, humans, they came into existence. They started to flourish. They, they gained superpowers. They became something more than human. But with all this power, their core instincts were violence. And with this violence led to their utter destruction. The world fought back against them. Some would say the greatest war of all time, melting and flooding and brush fires and ir irreversible viruses. And all the machines and all of the heroes attempted to stem the tide, but no one was quite sure what happened after. But such is the nature of war, he says. There's no victors, there's just violence. But after the war ended, all the humans seemed to have disappeared. Everything changed. And then this, this little girl that looks like she comes from the green says that she was created, or at least was told that she was created from the fallen leaves of Swamp Thing. And he says in a way perhaps, but it's not necessarily how she was created. And so what it's seeming to be is Swamp Thing is, is creating his own people, probably because he's so lonely and has no one around him to talk to and hasn't for years. And they're searching, and that's the thing, they're searching for humans, no matter how flawed and broken they are. And this is when another of his creations interjects, and he goes by the name of Indigo. And he's really just an a-hole at the end of the day, like he's, but at the same time, he's, he's telling truths. Like everybody is following Swamp Thing here, but the thing is, Indigo knows the truth, the truth that the humans aren't worth even being around or tracking down to begin with and that they've been following him for years and years and years not really understanding why because none of them have met a human before and this is where we pick up with heather his first creation and they seem to have found something maybe a human maybe something else they're not sure but one of them got trapped and heather breaks into this place, rescues him, and jumps out a window. And the building comes crumbling down on top of them. And this is when we see Swamp Thing use the green and protect them. And that's where it'll take us to later this evening with Swamp Thing and Heather sitting down and talking about what's going on in the world. How the seasons are changing, how the colors on the, on the trees are changing. And Swamp Thing asks the trees if they've seen any humans, but they haven't in such a long time. But the last time that they did see them, they went north. And so Swamp Thing wants to go north. He wants to take everybody north. He almost feels guilty about having everybody follow him on such an endeavor, though. But at the end of the day, they all want to follow Swamp Thing. Like, he's their creator. He's their father. He's Father Green at the end of the day. Now, picking up a little later, they find one of their own dead and a trail leading off. And the trail led them to a cave that had a human inside of it. And inside he had what appears to be a spear with the blood of their brother. And Heather disarms him and goes to smite him down. But before she does, Swamp Thing stops her and lets them all know that this is a human and that he's just scared. And this is where we're going to see a, a probably some, some, some allegiances broken, if you will. Because Heather is not happy about this. Not, not happy about being treated second best. Not happy about him chasing after humans his entire life. Not happy about one of their own just dying and him sparing the individual who killed it. And then he sits down and has a conversation with the man. And he tells him that he's Swamp Thing and he's been searching for humans for quite some time but has never found any. And he lets him know that he came from, from far up north, beyond the flood lakes. 
from the star fortress but it's all snow all the time there's no plants no trees no, there's no green that lives up there so he would never never know that the humans are there because he has no communications with that area and this man came here looking for others like him to help because when they left the star fortress there was 15 of them they were labeled as traitors and rebels they were hunted for many years the makers had told them that they were building something important within the fortress and that the dying man had conceived this grand idea for a, for a new tomorrow, a new future. But some of them realized that this was just bullcrap. And so they made their escape the best that they could. And this is when we see Obsidian sitting inside of a tube used for some kind of experiment. And the coming of the Obsidian Sun. And that will be the end of this issue. Alright, so jumping into Swamp Thing issue number 2. We pick up 18 miles north of Eureka. And they're with the human that they found and he's leading them to the Star Labs fortress. The last stronghold of mankind. And what seems to happen is some kind of, some kind of coup. Because all the leaders are no longer here and somebody had taken over. But there's still people inside that are willing to fight. And so Swamp Thing has to make the decision to have his people that he's created go in there and fight. And this is when we go inside of the Stars Lab facility. And we see Atticus and we see Woodru. And Atticus lets Woodru know that Obsidian is ready. Now Woodru had found him in the aftermath of the Great War. And he keeps saying that Obsidian's going to be their savior. That everybody is going to be free. Finally. Now he's sounding very much like a cult leader at this point. Not necessarily that the people are going to be flourishing but it sounds more like he just wants everybody to die and that in in turn is freedom and he has some really deep dialogue and he says there's only one eternal truth and it's that they know too much most creatures are content to be born to live to eat to reproduce and die but not human beings our intelligence takes us beyond our natural bounds to such superior awareness in a world that gives literally nothing. No matter how far we move from the natural world, the fundamental truth is inevitable. No matter how intelligent we become, we are trapped. Trapped by its external cage for all of eternity. And so his his plan is to, to take them away from their natural bounds. And make them one with the cosmos, if you will. And so the battle breaks out. And Swamp Thing and his people attack. And they're taking on these guards. And we can see that they are vastly superior in almost every way to human beings. He's designed them to adapt, to overcome. And they break into the facility. As they make their way through the door, they shoot an incendiary at Swamp Thing. But obviously it doesn't work. You know, they, humans have tried a million different ways to kill Swamp Thing. And no matter what, he always stands or he always comes back. And entering into the lab, he sees Woodru. And he asks Woodru, like, what have you done? And we see him take off his cloak. And he's part human, part the green. But the green rejected him. Because it saw how little he valued humanity. And the green turned away from him because of that. And this is when Woodru shows us the great destroyer Swamp Thing. That was unleashed upon the world. So it looks like Swamp Thing is partially responsible for whatever happened to humanity. Because he nearly wiped humanity off the face of the planet. At least that, that's what Woodru is telling us. And so Woodru's plan all along is to use obsidian and turn the sky black. To block out the sun and to starve the green so that it can never live again. And with that... Swamp Thing kills Woodru. And now with all of this done, everybody asks, what now? Because there's no way of stopping Obsidian from blowing at this point. The switch has already been pulled, if you will. Now Swamp Thing's people, they'll be perfectly fine. Because they can adapt to the new environment. Or at least so it seems. But humanity, they're not gonna live. And this is when Heather, one of Swamp Thing's closest, 
asks him if he's really going to choose them over his own creation. They're violent, they're angry, they, they literally wipe themselves from existence for the most part due to the violence. And you want to sacrifice our existence for theirs. And it, Swamp Thing lets her know, like, if I can give my body to protect them, I will. And this is where she goes to punch Swamp Thing, but only to have her hand broken because of it. And then he grabs her hand, and we see her start to disintegrate as Swamp Thing apologizes to her. And she goes down to her most innocent form, and she asks for him to answer the question. The question if they are worthy of his love. Why them over us? And he says, you know, because they are capable of being more. And he believes that's what it means to have a soul. The ability to transcend the bounds and attempt to be more. People like Woodrue look for transcendence outside of themselves. But these people, these may have done. They may have done terrible things. But within them lies the potential for goodness. To be so much more. And Swamp thinks people were never designed with a soul or anything like that. He built them and they would always be exactly who they are. Exactly who they were meant to be. And Heather was meant to be his innocence, his doubt, his ambition. But they can never be more than what he programmed them to be. They were all perfect in their own way. And this is when we see all of Swamp Thing's people start to disappear. And Obsidian explodes. And the night sky turns black. And this is when Swamp Thing reaches to the sky. Branches turning into a trunk. Turning into the giant tree that will now house all of what is left of humanity. At least until the sky is clear. Whenever that may be. Could be generations. But Swamp Thing essentially made himself the tree of life. And so under his canopy in his roots... Humanity thrives. They rebuild. And when the people come out, their fate rests entirely in their own hands. And someone asks if they, they will ever see Swamp Thing, the one from the stories. But all it takes is a seed, a stem, some earth, and some water, and a little bit of sun. And that will be the end of this issue. And that closes out Swamp Thing Future State. Honestly, this is probably... Probably one of my more favorite lines from the future state so far. Swamp Thing has been a really, really interesting line. I like seeing the post-apocalyptic where there's really not much humanity left. And somehow, Swamp Thing's been held responsible for this. Now, maybe it was of his own fruition or maybe maybe he was under the control or possession of something else. Who knows what, what could have happened. But what we do know is Swamp Thing is more than likely responsible for the death of of most of humanity. We can only assume the humanity took it to the brink and the green could no longer hold back its rage and resentment for humanity. At least that's my takeaway from it. It's just really unique also to see him create his own sentient beings. Sentient beings that are literally in his own image. You know, for, for a brief time, he was literal God. He was the creator, the Alpha, the Omega. He created an entire civilization vastly superior to human beings in almost every aspect of the way. Besides the fact of them being unable to grow past their bounds because at the end of the day, he doesn't know how to create a soul or even where a soul comes from. So having the ability to create one is almost impossible. Now, a lot of people, you know, suggest that it has to do with personality and subconscious and the ability to think and all of these things combined, but as it stands, Swamp Thing just doesn't have the, the knowledge or the ability to replicate what human beings are. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you haven't checked out Comic Breakdown and More podcast, be sure to go check that out. Available on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Available every Friday with a new episode. If you live in the Medford, Oregon area, be sure to go check out Rogue City Comics. One of the best comic stores in the area, I guarantee it. They got the latest comics, some really awesome gallery statues and stuff like that, busts, old comics, tons and tons and tons of old comics that you can go through. They do pricing regularly. Go ahead, go check them out, and until the next video.